Hi guys, welcome back. So now we've the past few videos we've been discussing the mechanism of action of a few of the different types of antibiotics that are out there. Um, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview and has got you thinking about different ways that antibiotics can act. Um, that is very much just a very brief overview of only a few of the classes of antibiotics. There's a whole um, variety of classes that we didn't get a chance to touch on, including things like tetracyclines, um, sulfonamides, uh, just to name a few. Um, there are a whole bunch of other mechanisms um, and pathways on which antimicrobials can act that um, I didn't have a chance to go over. Hopefully I'll have a chance to um, make a few more videos in the future about this topic and I can go over them then. Uh, I wanted to spend a bit of time though just discussing uh, not just antibiotics now but also um, basically how the bacteria develop uh, resistance to antibiotics. I've mentioned this a few times um, specifically in regards to how bacteria develop resistance to very specific antibiotics but I think it's important to also um, basically introduce this idea of how resistance can spread between species and with, between um, bacterial individuals, I guess. So today's video, I'm basically just going to be stepping through uh, this picture here. You can see this diagram. Uh, very, it's a, it's a great review. Um, Nature Reviews is a really great source. Um, if you're stuck on any kind of topic, Nature Reviews papers are really helpful and they're often written in a really easy to read way. So would very highly recommend those. And we're just gonna spend a bit of time basically walking through this. So this idea of horizontal transfer basically refers to uh, things moving between cells. Uh, that's essentially what it means. So uh, as opposed to vertical transmission, which is almost like mother to daughter, or in, in, in the case of bacteria, like the parent, the, um, the mother cell to the daughter cells, or the parent cell to the daughter cells, horizontal transfer is between two individuals that haven't arisen from a, the same cell line. So if we had this cell here that gave rise to two more bacteria, and then we had this cell over here, which gave rise to two bacteria. If this, uh, if this cell had a plasmid in it that then replicated and got passed, passed onto both daughter cells, we'd call that a vertical transmission. If this plasmid can then enter into this cell over here and inject that plasmid into it, we call that horizontal transmission. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. We, when we're talking about um, horizontal transfer, there's three big ways, um, as you can see, bacterial transformation, transduction, and conjugation. Transformation occurs when the donor bacterium, so this donor cell here, um, and this can be uh, a plasmid or it can just be bits of the, the chromosome, when the donor bacterium lyses, competent cells of the same species, so that's important, so this recipient cell is of the same species, uh, they can uptake that DNA and then incorporate that into their own genome. So it allows the spread of genes between serotypes. So for example, you can have a pathogenic serotype. Staph aureus is a great example. So Staphylococcus aureus. You have um, a lot of people carry Staph aureus just on their skin or in their nose and things like that. And it doesn't cause an issue. It's a commensal organism. However, there are different serotypes which can cause really profound disease. And um, for example, uh, Staphylococcus can pick up a gene that allows it to encode a toxin which can cause food poisoning. So uh, that change um, from a path from a commensal serotype to a pathogenic serotype, it can be caused by this idea by bacterial transformation. So again, you have a donor cell that's got a particular gene of interest or a plasmid, and for whatever reason, this cell lyses and its membrane falls apart, and a competent cell of the same species as the recipient cell can uptake that DNA from the environment and incorporate it into its own uh, genome. As it says here, this can be an antibiotic resistant gene as well. So we call this one transformation. Examples of bacteria that can do this are pneumococcus, so streptococcus pneumoniae, uh, Hib, Haemophilus influenza B, Neisseria, and Helicobacter pylori. They're all um, examples of bacteria which can be classed as competent. Okay, so that's transformation. Transduction is bacteriophage mediated. 
What it involves is a lytic phage, um, so one that's going to kill the cell. It uptakes bacterial DNA in, um, so instead of picking up its own genome, which is replicating within this, um, this bacteria, instead of picking up its own DNA, it picks up the bacterial DNA, and then the donor DNA is then incorporated into the host genome. So this uh, bacteriophage here is going to pick up this gene of interest um, and any other kind of genetic material, and then when it bursts out of the cell and then infects another cell, instead of infecting with its own genome, it actually injects the genome um, of the, the donor cell. So this allows the gene of interest to spread between cells, not necessarily of the same species, but they have to be within the same host range of this phage. So phages will bind receptors on the surface of bacteria and they can only infect bacteria that have those certain receptors there, which is the same reason that bacteriophages can't infect our cells is because we don't express those receptors. So the bacteriophage um, will generally have a range um, that might be limited to just one species. It could be broad amongst the a family of viruses. It can kind of vary, but um, it will allow basically this phage to spread this gene of interest into any recipient cell that also uh, that phage can affect. Cool. Um, sorry, I, I take back what I said before. So it can transfer between species, but not families. Um, so if you remember um, your order of um, domains and species, I guess. Um, so it can go between larger groups, but it can't go within massive groups. So this one here is within the same species. Write this out. This one here can be between species, but within the same family. And then finally we have bacterial conjugation. This is plasmid mediated conjugation. These plasmids here, they contain um, genes that allow the coding and the formation of this thing here called a cytoplasmic bridge. Cytoplasmic bridge. Um, and these bridges can occur between quite unrelated bacteria. For example, uh, E. coli with Vibrio cholerae, uh, quite unrelated bacteria but still able to form the cytoplasmic bridge, which allows the transfer of plasmids into the recipient cell. These plasmids, uh, they can replicate independently of its host cell. So it only transfers one plasmid across. You don't, there's no net loss of plasmid from the donor cell because this plasmid will just replicate and then move across. So this donor cell retains its plasmid and also gives a new plasmid to the recipient cell. Um, these bridges can also overcome the host barriers of phage. So we said that the phage, the bacteriophages can infect between species, but has to be within the same family. Um, the bridges mean that, you know, it, so this is of family A, so family A and species A, this is family a and species B. This guy here can be a family A, species A. This one here can be family B, species, let's say B again, just for continuity. And then if this um, is being infected by a little bacteriophage as well, and here's where we see how terrible of a artist I am. And that's injecting its uh, DNA kind of thing in here that it's picked up from another um, another another species. Then that can actually now transfer and transfer into a completely different family as well. So this phage, which is limited to the family A, can now infect this cell and actually um, spread the gene that it contained uh, into family B, which then can be packed 
picked up by a family bifage and transmitted around the family continuously. So these are really, really important mechanisms of bacterial resistance. This is how we get development of um, severe microbial resistance, especially this bacterial conjugation. Plasmids can often encode pathogenicity islands in which they will might encode a few toxins and generally they'll encode resistance to not just one antibiotic but often six to eight even more antibiotics uh, and different classes as well so that means that we can go from a completely susceptible cell um, so before this has received the plasmid it is completely susceptible to all antibiotics and then in one genetic movement it's now picked up um, resistance to 8 to 10 back different antibiotics and is now very hard to treat. So you can see how much of a big deal these plasmids are and there's a lot of research going into how we can try and mitigate this um, and treat that. But yeah, uh, I guess that's, that's all I really wanted to say for this video. Uh, as always, if you've got any uh, comments, please leave them below. And if not, thanks guys for watching.